professor in my PhD thesis, and I thought this um, session might be a good opportunity to see what clustering programs are out there and are they usable for um, the kind of data I'm dealing with. Uh, what I am dealing with is a bunch of uh, my known and my senior seals, uh, which have more than one side for sealing. So, um, for example, this one here in the middle represents one single seal that, that has three sides. And I have got 1033 of them. Uh, just a bit of history. They are um, collected in the Corpus der Minoischen and Mechanischen Siegel, uh, which moved to Heidelberg in 2011. And in 2007, uh, all the information about the seals was digitized in a database, which uh, allows me to um, process them with a machine. Uh, uh, which I did, so I harvested the, the data with uh, the OAE PMH harvesting protocol and got a bunch of XML files, which then I further processed with the help of Python into CSV. Um, and so now we're on the first tools um, for preparing data. Um, if you um, have not heard of it, um, OpenRefine is a tool which you can use to reconcile data and make transformations based on, uh, so you can use regular expressions. And yesterday I even heard that uh, it's possible to use uh, OpenRefine to um, connect or to reconcile data with GeoNames. So there's a uh, GeoNames API and then you can uh, um, clean your data uh, regarding uh, GeoNames. So it coordinates and identifies. And I used OpenRefine to, to um, clean up my data, see which attributes I used, and um, I also introduced some new values or new columns. Um, and then there's also always the use of spreadsheets for editing and stuff. So I think that's uh, known to everybody. So what I have is, um, I've got like two tables, one with, uh, which collects the information for one seal in one row, and then I have a second table which collects uh, the information for one side of a seal in one row, but um, what I want to concentrate on the table that collects the information for uh, one seal on one row. And this is the interesting part, the, the data types I, I am dealing with. So I have numeric data, which uh, is uh, like, for example, the number of sites, uh, the, the dimensions of the seal, and also the number of creatures represented on the, on the seals. I also have some uh, binary data. So I have a column that states if the script is used on the seal or not. Then I also have ordinal data, which means um, um, it's, it's not a continuous number, but it's a numbering, and you, if you order them, there's somehow so one is less than six, and a good example is the uh, Mo Scala I'm using for um, description of the material. Then I also have geographic information for find spots, so I'm also dealing with coordinates, uh, which um, always have two columns, you have the latitude and the longitude. And then most of it, uh, even when before I started uh, cleaning and, and transforming some data, most of it was ordinal data, so or, uh, not ordinal, nominal data, um, uh, which you can also uh, address as categorical data. And this is used, for example, for periods, they have names and not numbers. Uh, then for the description of the uh, creatures and ornaments um, used on the seals, so you have, um, you s there's stated it's a lion and there's a cow and there's a human and there's a pot and there's a plant and so on. Then also for the script, I have the uh, definition of the characters as nominal values and also for the shape of the seal, so if it's a prism <coughs> or if it's a um, um, amygdaloid or a lentoid and so on. 
Um, so this is uh, something. Um, yeah, then then the, the the thing gets a bit more complicated or even more complicated because for many of the nominal values it's also possible to have more than one value. So it's not just the seal has one lion, but it has some multiple other animals. And uh, one example also is the use of the script where I, for, for one seal, so for each seal side I have a combination of characters and then for the whole seal I have this for um, combination of characters. And then for the ornaments, um, repetitions are encoded with the name of the ornament and then the number, or, or um, if it has no ornament then there's, a, um, there's no ornament um, element. Uh, and then for the creatures, or, or the, the animal depicted, I have the name of the creatures and then there's a separate table where the different attributes of the creatures in which direction they're looking to and uh, if they're doing something special uh, is noted. Uh, although the, the latter part of the information I'm not taking into account, I'm just looking into the creatures. But um, so we have bag of values, which is um, something to keep in mind for. Uh, the thing I want to do is um, I would like to cluster the seals to see if um, if they can be grouped into some groups and when then trying to analyze them from an archaeological point of view if these groups make sense. And clustering, for those who don't know what it is, is a method from unsupervised machine learning which divides data into groups based on specific features. So that would be the different values um, and the, the different attributes where you could say, okay, let's cluster the seals by the number of seal sites and the use of script, for example. And uh, the thing is with clustering, there exist a lot of algorithms, uh, of, of which the most prominent one uh, is k-means, then there's also hierarch hierarchical clustering, db-scan, and so on, and so on. Um, and then an important thing if you do clustering is um, the similarity measure. Um, because somehow the, uh, the, the computer has to calculate how objects can belong into the group and this is done if they have a similar value or a similar um, a measure. And for this I think there's even more similarity measures than uh, clustering algorithms. And so we have the Euclidean distance, the Jacquard uh, measure, the Gower um, measure, the Manhattan distance, the cosine function, and so on and so on. That's, uh, uh, yesterday I heard a comment that there exist uh, like three books with um, lists and lists of similarity measures. So I think that's uh, a whole talk for itself. Um, and just to, to give you a, a um, an overview of how this clustering works. Um, here's a, um, I'll give you a short explanation of, of k-means. You start by initially choosing how many clusters you want to get, so how many groups. And that's the k and k-means, which stands for the number of groups. Then an initial set of means is set um, or calculated. You, you can choose them randomly or try to do some, um, some better informed measure and, and calculate them. They do not have to be actual objects in the data, in your data, they could also be somewhere else, like in this example. Then, with the help of the similarity measure, you um, calculate which points belong, are, are nearest to the initial means you set, and then clusters are built. And then, when you have your clusters, from this, in each cluster you calculate the new mean, uh, which is represented in this graphic by, so this is the old mean, and then you calculate the new mean and it gets shifted a little bit. And then from this starting point, again, you calculate the, the clusters and you repeat these two steps, so calculating the clusters, then calculating a the new means, and again calculating the clusters. 
until you reach some stopping functions or condition you set. Either it's the number of iterations or either it's um, some, some value where you say, okay, the, the clustering value doesn't change that much, so we're stopped. So that's for the theory. Now for, for clustering, I, um, so I already did it with Python, but I was wondering if there already exist tools that allow you to do it by clicking and pointing and uh, that's, uh, which, which could be a bit more user friendly for archaeologists. Um, yeah, I googled around. I found many websites, um, so I, I've, I found that, um, in, especially in bioinformatics, you get a whole of um, a lot of uh, clustering programs. But the thing is, um, since it's a uh, information, uh, a mathematic um, method, you can use data from anywhere else. So you shouldn't think, okay, it's bioinformatics; it won't be usable for uh, my data. Um, that's wrong to think of. Um, so what I found is um, quite a lot of programs, some old or some looked at the, at the first glance look very old but aren't. Um, and I examined, examined six programs a bit closer. Uh, there are Cluto, Cluster 3.0, Tanagra, Jmin Hep, past and Beka. The ordering is uh, randomly, it's just like uh, which, uh, the, the program I started with first is first and then uh, the next ones. And um, the, the first um, thing I was looking for is on which um, op uh, operating systems they can be used. Um, oh, and the, the most important criterion, which is not mentioned in the table, is is it free of use or not? So the, the tools I'm presenting here are all free to use and, and open source. Uh, then I looked if I can use it on Windows, on Mac and on Linux. I tested it on Linux and the ones that only have Windows versions I tested on an old XP virtual machine. Uh, all, they all worked. Well, they're in the table, so they worked. Um, then I checked for the versions just to see if there's some active programming going on or not. Um, and I, I so I, I was quite surprised. Um, oh, um, there's a small typo. Beka has a uh, 2017 version and it's 3.8 and not 3.19. That's from the, from the past um, entry. Um, yeah, I was quite surprised about past because um, I think that's, that's a tool you might have heard of. It's um, a program by a paleo paleontologist from Oslo. And the website looks very old and, and like it was built in the 90s and I'm a person who always looks at the first, so always um, is influenced by the first look of, of a website and um, so I thought, oh okay, that, that uh, can't be that good, but then I was very surprised when I, when I executed the exe file you can download and it worked perfectly, you had a nice interface and uh, the latest version was even from February, I think. So then um, the next thing I was looking for was the documentation. Um, the, the documentation has uh, some smaller numbers here, which uh, represent, um, so I had like categories, is there a technical documentation? Is there a documentation about how to install it? Is there, a uh, is there an extensive manual? Is there... Um, is there somehow a community behind the programs or is, is, there, is there a bigger user base where you can ask each other questions and, and try to find solutions? Um, and what I also looked for was uh, to see if the documentation also contained the formulas for the similarity measures, for example, or if they co contained references to the um, algorithms they used. So that's, that so that you know what the program is doing and, and you don't just deal with a black box. And 
the numbers represent uh, this um, this documentation level. So five is the best one in, in this table, and then we we have one uh, tool which is a Java-based program called JMinHep, which um, only had a web page which which said, okay, you download this and open it, and then you're fine to go, but nothing more. Uh, well, it also said, okay, we are only using k-means and hierarchical clustering. Um, then the next thing I had to look at was which data you can import in there. I, I was, uh, until that point, I was always thinking, yeah, with a CSV, I'm good to go. I can plug it in everywhere, but that's not the case. So this program has a own um, um, structured text format, then the, the cluster 3.0 doesn't use comma separated or semicolon separated, but tab <coughs> delimited text, so you have to change the, the, the limiter in a particular format as well. Then Tanagra also just takes tab delimited text, but it also claims it takes uh, Excel files and um, open document spreadsheets. I didn't try that out. Then Jamin Hebb uses the R format, which was uh, developed by Veka from the Waikato University in New Zealand. I'm, I'm coming to Veka at the bottom. But the thing is, it's not using R at its, at its, as it is described in the official documentation. So I had to try it several, uh, several times to import the data until I found out, okay, it's not it's using spaces instead of commas and um, it doesn't support all the attribute kinds um, are supposedly should support. Um, then for pass, we also are, um, no, pass was the, the good thing. Um, no, it also doesn't take semicolon separated CSV, but it takes tab, space, or comma, so it's a bit uh, expensive, uh, more, more, uh, has more functionalities. Uh, and then for Veka, we already uh, we also are dealing with R files. It takes also CSV, and where you can spe specify which delimiter CSV is using, and then it takes a an, an whole other set of file formats. And it is also possible to connect Veka to an online database and directly fetch the data from the database and um, put it back into the data database. I think that's a really nice function. Uh, Functionality. The next thing I was looking at was um, which data types are supported by the program, and that's uh, that's the thing, or that's the, the part that is crucial for for clustering in archaeology because you're not always only dealing with numerical data, and um, so there we the all support numerical data, which is obvious. Um, then ordinal data is only supported by PAST and VECA. Um, it's, it's also very nice how they're dealing with it because when you import the data you can for each column specify what kind of data type you're dealing with. So you can say this is numeric, this is nominal, this is um, ordinal. And then nominal is also supported by um, Tanagra and um, PAST and VECA. Um, just thinking if there was, uh, yeah, there was one specific thing in, in past. Nominal data is supported, <coughs> but you have to transform it into numbers. And so, and, and the thing is you can't do it in past. So in past you can import a list of, um, for example, seal shapes. It displays them well, but it can't work with it. And if you want to cluster it, you would have to convert them into numbers. So where you say that the prism is a number one and the uh, lentoid is number uh, two. Uh, but this you would have to do uh, before importing data into the program. Uh, then I checked for the number of algorithms uh, the program support. Um, the, the first number is the, the actual number, and then some of the programs have like variants for, for their algorithms. <coughs> so that's why, for example, for Pluto you get um, 12 instead of 6, because for each program, uh, for each 
a clustering algorithm, you have a variant to, to choose from, and the same applies to the other. And so the, the program with mo most choice, choices was uh, Veka and Cluto. Um, and what I also noticed <coughs> is that not every program uses the same name for the same algorithm, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit uh, tricky to find out which one is which. And also for the similarities measures, you, you sometimes ha have the correlation function, which is uh, equal to the Pearson uh, um, measure. And, and so it's a, it's a bit uh, try to, to find and dig into the documentation if, if it's possible to see which measure is used. And then uh, regarding the measures, past is uh, the best. Uh, the plus stands for the thing that you can define your own similarity measure. That, I think that's a really nice feature. You can also define, no, it's only, you can only define your, your own similar, similarity measure, but that's a very cool thing to do, I think. So if you miss a similarity measure in the past, you still can set it up on your own. That's uh, very nice. Then I looked um, on how the programs visualize the, the data they are producing. Most of them do. Um, this one is from, so, so Cluster 3.0 is a <laughs> program dedicated, dedicated to genome data, which is also very special because instead in distinguishing between rows and columns, it distinguishes between genes and arrays. And so that's a bit... Um, Offsetting and the visualizations uh, are not 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 that good. What I um, the, the program I like more regarding the visualizations was uh, Veka because when you're done or, or when you see your data, you get a set of um, small um, over uh, small diagrams where you see how the different points uh, separate in. Should have put a, in, an image about that on, on here. Uh, how the different programs separate. Uh, mm, so we have a, a, a coordinate system with dots, and you can set the the, the different attributes to to live in the, on the x and the epsilon axis, and you get an overview of all combinations, and then you can look for interesting patterns. So I really like that. But the thing with Vika is you can't really export the um, visualizations, which is uh, provided by most, yeah, by all other programs. If they produce visualizations, you can export them in a uh, specific graphic form. Uh, so after doing this, uh, if you want a recommendation, you can, I would say, choose PAST or VECA. Past is, um, so it's developed by a paleontologist for paleontology, but you can use it for everything else. And Deka is from the machine learning group or natural language, things, natural language processing group at the University of Waikato. And um, what's also very nice in Deka is that, you, uh, that you're able to define like workflows if you want to do batch processing. So you, you define a workflow first, take this data, convert it, and then do some machine learning or maybe do first some, some reduction of dimensionality and then do machine learning. <coughs> um, so that's a very nice function which you can save and then use later on. Um, yeah, but there's more programs uh, which I didn't have the time to, to uh, test in, in detail. So did you know there's a, a free and open source variant of SPSS, which is called PSPP. <laughs> that's, uh, that's offered by the, the, the GNU project. Um, then there's also a program called CNIME, uh, which um, offers you also a whole set for, for doing data science. So not only clustering, but more. The, the same applies to Veka, which is not only clustering but doing data science, and also passed as a statistics package. But um, especially Pluto, Cluster, and JMinHep are designed specifically for clustering. Uh, then we have Orange, which is a machine learning platform with a GUI based on Python. The um, 
I will, I will definitely test that as well. But, um, and it looks very promising and it also provides all tools you would like to have and use for data <coughs> analysis and machine learning. Then I also found there, that there is a GUI for R which is called Rattle. Um, then there's Rapid Miner, which is also a platform for data science, but is not available for free, but there's a 30-day trial version. So I think I'm also going to, to try and, and see how that compares to especially uh, Nine and Orange. And a tool I, I really liked but it's not specifically for clustering, but for principal compa component analysis is ClustVis, which is available online. And then online, you, you have tabs to select from, and you start with the first tab where you import your data, then in the next tab, you do some filtering or reordering, and then in the next tab, you, you start the principal component <coughs> analysis, and I really like that. Um, but, in the end, if you really want full control of the clustering algorithms you're going to use and the similarity measures you want to use, I think you will have to go to Python or R or any other, or other, any other programming language. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, you can write me and I'm also here. <laughs> Thank you.